There you are. Good morning. How you doing? You well? It is myself. It is uh, the 30th of July 2019. The 30th. Every Irish broadcaster in the world dreads the 30th because we can't say it very well. The 30th. It is the 30th. Yeah, uh, good. Bit of bit of panic yesterday regarding the old dog. Mentioned this on um, on Twitter yesterday, but uh, panic averted. No big deal. Thank God for that. And uh, we're back to normal today. There you are. Thanks for the uh, kind messages. By the way, those of us who have pets, we know it's panic stations when anything happens and anything goes wrong. Panic stations for two reasons. One, we love the little mites. And two, because we dread what the receptionist is going to say at the veterinary hospital when they've completed the treatment. It's usually not good news, but anyway, that doesn't matter. Money is irrelevant, isn't it, when it comes to looking after our pets. Great to be with you this morning, and um, just to let you know, it's a packed old week for the Richie Allen radio show. I'm going to be doing a live radio show Friday afternoon with uh, Dean Henderson. Dean's got a brand new book out and he was very kind enough to send me the PDF version of it yesterday and I was flicking through uh, the first few pages reading it uh, last night and it's very, very interesting indeed. So I'll be doing a 90-minute show with uh, Dean on Friday. And um, yeah. Right, Philip Blair, good morning. Good morning and uh, good morning to Anonymous in Western Massachusetts. Lawrence King, Dean Thornby, Jennifer Garcia, Gail, and Jake, who normally catches this on the replay, but he's in London at the moment. He's originally from Sydney. Have a great time in London, Jake. Thanks for dropping in this morning. Hi to Steve O'Neill and Julie Walters, and to Josh Radcliffe. Let me scroll on down there. Let me scroll on down there. I'm not even going to mention the Jimmy Cranky picture. That's jazz there. And yeah, lying down on some pieces of paper. Hi to Threta Glumberg. How you doing, Threta? To Hod God 10. Hang on a second. What are you doing over there? She's, she's ripping up some paper. This is a dog who's never chewed anything in her life, ever, nor swallowed it. <laughs> she must have been hit on the head. Now she's eating paper. Hang on a sec. Give me that, will you, you loony? <laughs> Don't be rolling over now. You're not supposed to eat this stuff. Huh? Now I'm going to have to watch her now non-stop. Look. I mean, she must be bored and there's no reason why she would be bored. She spends all of her time with me, playing with me, outdoors with me. Now she's taking to chewing and eating things. Jesus wept. Anyway. Get out of here, you loony. The dog who just wags her tail and laughs in your face when you tell her what to do. Thanks, Jazz. Hi to Rhonda Matthew, who's uh, in Australia. How you doing, Rhonda? To John and Sarah Stott. To Kronos, my account got hacked. To Rose Williams. Sean Mack. Jack Woolley, Kareem Orkana. Lovely. Marvellous. Cardini, how you doing, Cardini? Andy New. Lovely. Patrick Vadine, Your Infinite Way. And Your Infinite Way is in Kerry. Watching what did. To 2 6, to Jonathan Harrison, to Wendy Bell, to William Lund, to Deborah Di Domenico, to Andy Jerry, Mr. Dry Reach in Dalesford. Holy God. Hi, John Sheridan. Uh, Jazz's teeth are fine yeah all that's been checked yeah she's just acting the Muppet at the moment she's a Muppet hi to Joe Carew to Jim Kingsbury to Spotless Leopard the Dunavarian that's not fake news though she was chewing on a bit of um, Simpsons calendar Carolyn got me a little calendar which sits on just behind the mixing desk in the studio so that I wouldn't get the date wrong because I have a habit of getting the date wrong when I introduce the radio show because I'm a moron basically it's because I don't sleep. Look at me. Suffer with ins- Th- there is a newspaper story about insomnia today. I've lived with insomnia for years. It goes back to my childhood, to my teenage years. 
which I'm not getting into here. I've gotten into before. Hi to Mark Simic and to Liz McFall. Thanks for the donation. Is you're too generous. You don't have to do that all the time. But thank you very much. I don't think this particular program is worth <laughs> donating to. And I mean this soup, this chat, this newspaper thing. This is utter garbage. This. Don't feel the need to uh, super chat this, but thank you so much. Hi to Etic Buxton. Lovely. Now. Now. I watched The Great Hack on Netflix last night. And I said I'm going to become Siskel and Ebert. Is that what they were called? Roger Ebert and Gene Siskel? Or is it the other way around? Gene Siskel and Roger Ebert? Or Roger Siskel and Gene Ebert? Siskel and Ebert? Or Barry Norman? Or Jonathan Ross? Whose speech impediment wasn't any impediment to a career in the media. Jonathan Ross. Used to be a brilliant radio presenter years ago, Jonathan Ross. He's an arsehole now, but he was a brilliant presenter at one time, I believe. I liked him anyway. So uh, I'm going to review The Great Hack. You ready for it? It's fucking useless. All right, I shouldn't have sworn. Um, Will I give it a more cerebral review? Will I? I made some notes, so I've got to refer to my notes. I'd like you to think a lot of the time that I'm a genius is that I'm doing stuff off the cuff. Um, I am a genius, and most of the time I am doing stuff off the cuff. <laughs> I am. But I've made a few notes, just a few bullet points. I wish I could show you the notes, so you'll see that it's just bullet points. About the great hack. Have you watched it? Have you watched it? What do you think of it? What, what have you made of it? I'm going to tell you what I think of it. Now, if you want to know about Cambridge Analytica, and the men and women behind it, and a really in-depth look at how these people have not only attempted to influence your thinking, my thinking, and everybody whom they targeted, the thinking, right? That's the Cliff Notes. Go to Neil Sanders, mindcontrol.com. Neil's a bit of a genius. And while... And if you've listened to me interview Neil, you'll know that... There are, there are many things that I don't agree with Neil in terms of his conclusion of where all this is going to lead. I respectfully disagree in some areas. What I don't disagree with is the brilliance of the investigative journalism and how Neil Sanders, over a period of several articles on neilsandersmindcontrol.com, has clinically dissected how this all works, but how the players have been behind or, or at least how they have influenced the rise of populism. But, but, more importantly, how they have advanced the careers of not only right-wing politicians, but right-wing commentators. Right? Okay. Phone's ringing again, look. Jesus, Mary and Holy Saint Joseph. That's when you know that you're not even Z-list celebrity. I'm way below Z-list celebrity. When people ring you because they have no idea that you're doing a, a chat on YouTube. Piss off. Decline, decline. Go away. Go away. Now, Jesus wept. Now, so Neil Sanders is brilliant. Look out for the documentary, by the way, made by Richard, which um, I'm going to plug the bejesus out of again tonight because um, I'll tell you about tonight's show, the radio show, a little bit later. Now, so the great hack then on Netflix is about how Cambridge Analytica used what has come to be known as weapons grade data from Facebook to target people, to target undecided people, people who might be suggestible. That's a very good word, suggestible, right? So Cambridge Analytica used weapons grade data to target undecided voters, suggestible people, not only in the US election of 2016, but also in the European Union in-out referendum of the same year. Jesus, what? Holy God. Right, that's what it is. And they basically bombarded people with advertisements. Right? Right. So that's what the film is about. Now... Not to be too scientific in my analysis, the, the film is one massive whine 
or whinge from start to finish. A whinge about the fact that Trump won the election in 2016 and a whinge about the fact that Vote Leave won the day on June 23rd, 2016. So it's it's one long, and it's very long, the film. Comes in at over two hours. Whine about the fact that the right triumphed in America and seemingly the right triumphed here in the UK with Trump and Brexit. It's a massive whine. And that's not fair, you see. That's what the film is about. It's not fair that Trump won the election. And it's not fair that Brexit... I was going to say happened. It didn't happen. And it won't happen. But that the Brexiteers won the day. Now, if you've watched the film, you won't be able to argue with me. It's a massive whine. It's not fair, goddammit. Something has to be done about it. Right. Facebook and Google use our data. We know this. You know it. I know it. Everybody who's ever used social media knows it. Keep that in mind. Why am I saying that? It's important to keep that in mind. They know. We know. And we know that they collect our information to better sell shite to us. Stuff. Things. Products. And ideas, of course. Right? And running through this film, The Great Hack, is this sense of despair and pissed offedness. There's a term, pissed offedness. That the data was actually used to target these persuadables that I mentioned. These undecideds. That's what they're pissed off at. Pissed off that the Trump campaign used the data to target persuadables. It runs through this film, right? By um, appealing to people's anger about uh, a, a wide variety of issues. Their anger at immigration. Their anger at the Clinton thing at Hillary Clinton and her husband and all the rest of it, right? So The Great Hack, I would say, it's a fairly sinister film. It's totally subjective. And it seems to be asking the question all the way through, how do we regulate the thing that we hate? This idea of fake news and that one side of the political divide is using fake news to target people and to program them, to brainwash them, and to elicit an action from people. The action they wanted to elicit was that people would go and vote for Trump. People would go and vote for Brexit. How do we regulate that? That was very frustrating watching that last night. Basically, the film is a love letter to regulating the internet. That's what it is. It's one long kind of lefty, they would say liberal in the United States, one kind of lefty love letter to people um, who are in favour of regulating the internet and preventing this happen again. Trump got in, Brexit happened, massive liberal scream and there should have been a law that prevented that. That's basically what's going on through the film. Should have been a law that prevented all that happening. If you believe that Cambridge Analytica was powerful enough to be successful enough to swing the election in America and to swing the referendum here in the UK. It's a nonsense, of course, that one company could do that. And lost, of course, in the narrative of this film is an irrefutable fact. And the irrefutable fact is that much of or most of the data that was extracted from Facebook by Cambridge Analytica was in the public domain because you put it in the public domain. I used to put it in the public domain. You put it all out there, right? On social media, on Facebook and on Twitter and on Instagram. You put it all out there. You tell anybody who wants to know every single thing about you. Cambridge Analytica posted at one point that they possessed 5,000 data points on every single human being on social media. Yeah, because you gave it to them. You went out there and said, yeah, this is who I am. This is, who, this is what I do. This is what I think. This is what I say. This is what I wear. This is what I eat. This is what I drink. This is where I go. These are the types of people I like. These are the types of people I don't like. Here is everything that you want to know about me. Cambridge Analytica went, not just Cambridge Analytica, by the way, they went, thanks very much. 
lovely. Right? So this film then wants you to believe that they weaponized that data. And the Trump campaign did. And they did it so successfully that Donald Trump would have got in. And maybe, without this sort of targeting and propaganda, maybe, just maybe, he wouldn't have got in. And we'd all be better off then because we'd have a lefty politician. And Donald Trump is one of the worst human beings to ever hold any office. Of course he is. He's a psychotic, narcissistic, sociopathic, pathological liar who fancies his own daughter, who hangs out with paedophiles. He's a scumbag, but he's no more or less of a scumbag than Hillary Clinton. Keep that in mind. You put it all out there. Yeah, Facebook sold some data to Cambridge Analytica, but most of what they got was already in the public domain anyway. So, what this film, The Hack, does is, is basically wants the audience not to take on the role of the outraged. That's, that's, that's Michael Moore's trick. In his very subjective documentaries, Michael Moore elicits a feeling of outrage or an expression of outrage amongst the audience. It's an outrage. We're outraged at voting for Columbine. We're outraged that that could happen. We're outraged at um, Fahrenheit 9-11. What they've done with this film, and this taps into a lot of what I talk about on the radio show, is they don't want you to take on the role of the outraged. They want you to take on the role of the victim. You are the helpless victim in all of this. You've got no responsibility. You're not capable of understanding when you are being targeted with advertising and when you're not. You're incapable of understanding it. You are a victim. This is what the elite media machine is doing. And it's not a right-wing thing, it's not a left-wing thing. It's totally, it's everywhere. You know, eliciting a feeling of victimhood amongst people. You're a victim. It breached your human rights. Breached your human rights, what Cambridge Analytica did. But it couldn't have. Because to repeat what I said two minutes ago, you put all that information out there. You put it all out there. You knew when you put it all out there, you knew that it could be used by companies, whether it's massive superstores, big conglomerates, conglomerates even, or whether it's, it's, it's political campaigns. You knew that it could be taken, it could be dissected, it could be analysed and it could be used. You knew that. You knew that. You knew that you were leaving yourself open to propaganda, to manipulation, and to targeted advertising. And what's incredible about this film, and it really is crap, this film, it is a worthless piece of crap, I, I can't believe I stayed to the end of it, is that it doesn't juxtapose in any way what is happening on social media with the thing that we've had forever and ever and ever, which is advertising and propaganda, forever through television, through radio, through films, through magazines, targeted television ads by political campaigns playing on people's fears. You've seen them in America. Jesus, long before Cambridge Analytica came along, you would be sitting down in America. And I spent some time travelling in America in 2002, right? Which was... Which was... Midterm elections time, I think. It was midterm election time when I was travelling in America in the summer. And I couldn't believe the advertisements I was seeing. Playing on people's fears, negative advertising. Playing on people's fears about, about any number of issues. Ads basically making incredibly almost libelous claims about that person's opponent. It's been there forever. Forever. It's not new. What Cambridge Analytica did is not new. So I would argue that the effect of it is negligible in terms of was it successful enough to swing the vote for Trump or was it successful enough to swing the vote for Brexit? I would say no. No. It's a ridiculous film here. Nothing new. I mean, it's ridiculous. Cambridge Analytica harvested your data. Yeah. But the filmmakers don't talk at all about what the intelligence agencies 
and what governments are doing with all the data that you put on there. They use um, they use Trump talking about crooked Hillary a lot in the film, and they use it as almost some like some sort of like gotcha moment, you know. Like it's a big expose, crooked Hillary. Look, all of a sudden people are using crooked Hillary, cro- crooked Hillary, crooked Hillary. Everywhere, it's everywhere. And Cambridge Analytica came up with the slogan, crooked Hillary, and it went viral. Trump was using it. But she is crooked. People knew that anyway. And you're not going to tell me that those on the right or on the far right were somehow swayed by slogans like that. Or the undecideds were swayed in great numbers by slogans like Crooked Hillary. They knew she was crooked. You know. The film doesn't talk about the fact that this data mining has been used right across the political spectrum, not just on the right. It's used by the left as well. It was used by Barack Obama. There is scant mention of it. There is mention of it. They present people like um, Brittany Kaiser and this guy Christopher Wiley, the guy with the pink hair, as some sort of whistleblowers. <laughs> I mean, you have to watch it. You have to see it to believe it. Ultimately, the film is about fake news. Something has to be done about fake news. It's a very sinister film. And, you know, it absolves the viewer. And it, it absolves the constituent, the, the, the citizen of any personal responsibility whatsoever. I know, I know a lot of people watching this won't like that, won't like my concluding, what I've, what I've concluded after watching the film. But it's just a lefty piece of claptrap, which ultimately goes down a very, very bad road. And that is the road of censoring uh, the internet and appointing arbiters of fake news you know what is and what isn't true and it ultimately results in shutting down those that you don't agree with it really is dreadful that's my review of it anyway I mean ironically the film is doing that which it accuses Cambridge Analytica of doing (laughs) it really is you know selectively picking um pieces of information that suits its overall narrative and omitting that which doesn't suit its overall narrative. Exactly what Cambridge Analytica have done and would continue to do if allowed. So it's it's rubbish. It's a dreadful film. And, uh, you know, importantly, you know, remember, you put all that information out there. You gave it to them, willingly. And... If you go on Facebook or Instagram today or you go on to your email account and you're seeing advertisements specifically targeted at you and maybe some of those advertisements are targeted at you because somebody is accessing the camera on your phone. Somebody's accessing the microphone on your phone. Yes. Yes. But you know that. Right? Right. Okay. Hi to Danny Warden, how you doing Danny? Let me um, know what you think, by the way, of uh, the film. I'll be very interested in your take on it. Thanks to Jack Woolley, thank you Jack for the super chat. I gave uh, Facebook a miss uh, 18 months ago, I deleted it. I deleted my account. Excuse me. There you go. Lovely. Not many of you have seen it yet by the looks of this. Loads and loads of comments, but nobody giving me any review of it. Okay. I mean, before you watch it, go and have a look at The Century of the Self by Adam Curtis. Narcissism reigns and identity politics reigns. And the elite knows that. You know, what Cambridge Analytica done, did, is happening on Facebook as well through algorithms that push things like the canary this leftist rubbish website headed up by Kerry Ann the utter Muppet Mendoza which is pushing lefty propaganda at people it's happening everywhere and like I said on Sunday View you're being programmed to think that it's only happening to your identity group you think it's only happening to you and people watching The Great Hack if they read The Guardian 
and if they are if they could consider themselves to be on the left and if they like Jeremy Corbyn and Bernie Sanders they will be watching it with great anger ah the bastards on the right ah the cheats the cheats no no the reason you feel like you do is because you've been targeted in the same way you just don't want to admit it and ultimately we go on to these social media platforms and we eventually create for ourselves a big vacuum a big echo chamber where all we're getting is information that suits our beliefs because we isolate those who disagree with us we surround ourselves th- through our group membership and through the friends we accept we surround ourselves with people who see the world the same as we do that's how it works okay now, i know again i know some of you won't like that but it's true but do watch the film don't take my don't take my word for it um watch it yourself if you're a netflix subscriber if not i'm sure it'll be on line somewhere else where you can watch it I'm not advocating piracy now, but, well, I'm not, but anyway. Let's have a look at the papers then. It's uh, five minutes to ten. We better get a move on. It absolves you of all personal responsibility. You're the helpless victim here. And you were bombarded by advertising that changed your mind. Look, I've said it a thousand times. Boris Johnson and, and Nigel Farage not good people they're as bad as every other one of them no matter what part of the political spectrum they're on which side of the divide Johnson and Farage don't want to exit the European Union to to give real democracy to people of course they don't I know this but it doesn't mean that membership of the European Union is a good thing it isn't a good thing it's a fascistic anti-democratic organisation which ultimately becomes everything that Orwell and Huxley imagined, but twice as bad. Okay? That's the catch here that people can't get their heads around. Oh, I can't believe you're uh, throwing in with Farage and Johnson. I'm not. I never have done. I'm saying that membership of the European Union is terrible. What those guys want is equally as terrible. I spoke to Neil Sanders on the radio show about this. We kind of finally understood one another course you got this neocon zionist cabal uh, on on the other side of the pond that doesn't like the european union of course it doesn't mean just because those guys don't like it that it's a good thing it isn't right what they want is terrible as well they want ttip you know people have to educate themselves and by doing the only way to do that is to get off facebook shut it down delete your account get away from it Read stuff for yourself. Speak to people whom have a different point of view than you. And listen to them. Don't melt down. I mean, at the end of it, you might say, right, I still don't agree with you. Anyway, right, let's have a look at the Financial Times. Talking about fear. This is, I mean, Sterling tumbles after Johnson's minister's store no deal Brexit fear. I mean, do the leftists, the Corbyn supporters... Do they really think this is any different than what Cambridge Analytica were doing? Look at it. Of course, the the sterling price dipped. Of course, because there are people manipulating it to make it so. (laughs) Johnson is telling lies about going for a no-deal Brexit. He's got no intention of it. But some people believe it. So let's manipulate the price of the pound. Then we can put these stories out. There isn't a single newspaper today that goes against it so that is Cambridge Analytica but for the leftists look at the times sterling slumps amid fears of no deal Brexit yeah of course of course there's the story inside the paper oh that's a different story we'll come back to that in a minute couldn't organise a piss up in a brewery there's the um, sterling slumps amid fears of no deal Brexit yeah there's the story in the times yeah the markets the markets are terrified of a no-deal Brexit. So the sterling is slumped. Yeah. And what else? And car manufacturing. and Oh, it's all terrible. This is Cambridge Analytica. <laughs> it isn't them, of course. But it is what they were attempting to do in the mainstream media. 
but on the other side do you see what I'm saying you do understand it right I know you're not stupid pound on the slide ah! as alarm over no deal Brexit grows right can't leave the European Union so we'll manipulate the markets we'll drop share prices a bit and we'll say that it's going to be catastrophic if we left. Of course, we wouldn't be in danger. There wouldn't be a threat to jobs and manufacturing. Why would there be if you left a fascistic, anti-democratic organisation that tells you you can't fish your own waters? That tells you here are the quotas? That tells you, you've, you, 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 you for reasons of competition, you can't help your own industries? Come on, people. The European Union sells more to this country as a collective, far more. That's what the deficit is, the trade deficit, than this country sells into the European Union. There would be no tariffs, no punitive measures by the European Union. There wouldn't be. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Because the European Commission would be murdered. It would be like the final scene in Casino with Joe Pesci and Robert De Niro when the bosses in Kansas say, why take a chance? Just kill them all. Kill them all. You'd have the heads of every major corporation in Europe saying, kill them all. Right? Don't punish. Don't punish manufacturers in England. Don't do it. Because they'll do it to us and it will hurt us more. Johnson. On the front page of the Express, kill backstop and we can do a deal. You see, one in a million chance there'll be no deal, said Johnson yesterday. Of course, because there will not be a no deal Brexit. There will not be. There should be. And there should have been on the 24th of June 2016. But of course, the genius of the, of the Article 50 insertion into the European Constitution. Genius. Because it gives us two years to stop it happening. Right? When the following day we should have said that's it. We'll go. Um, we'll keep our trading arrangements by the way. People say that I'm a liar as a presenter that I'm naive. I'm not. It is the truth. We could have walked out on the 24th and said right, sorry rules on fishing our waters and also by the way on who else can fish our waters. We'll make those thank you very much. Health and safety rules We'll make our own, thank you very much. We're capable of doing that ourselves as a sovereign nation, thank you very much. And by the way, as we're leaving, we're, we don't plan on kicking out settled European citizens from the country. We don't plan on doing that. What we do plan on is having our own immigration policy from now on. We'll do that. And finally, we don't plan on putting any extra tariffs on goods coming in from the European Union. We would expect you to do the same. Don't play that game with us, because if you do, we'll hurt you. Right? That's how it should have went on the 24th. Handshake, right? We good? We good? Thank you. Off you go. But of course, nobody wants to leave the European Union. Not Boris Johnson, not Theresa May, none of them. Really. Johnson is being manipulated by far darker forces that want to privatise every square inch of planet Earth. He's just a puppet, right? It's the truth, people. These are truths. This is not conjecture, it's a fact. There's Johnson with Jimmy Cranky yesterday. Scotch wrath. Boris was heckled. Boris Johnson was heckled. Johnson was heckled. Let's call him Johnson. Um, after visiting Scottish First Minister Nicola Sturgeon, who previously called him a racist. wonder did that come up. I doubt it. That's in the Metro. The eye paper. Scotland fights back against Johnson. More nonsense. Jimmy Cranky wants to take Scotland out of the union. No bad thing. No bad thing. Should be no union. Scotland, nor Northern Ireland, nor Wales should be part of any constitutional monarchy because it isn't constitutional. It's not democracy. We live in a fascist union. It is. Right? So of course Scotland should want to leave it, but Jimmy Cranky wants to hand Scottish sovereignty then over to the European Union. There you are. What would happen then? Well, Scotland would get a lot of money from the European Central Bank to develop aspects of the country, whether it be, whether it be roads, rail. Right? Billions. And then eventually Scotland wouldn't be able to pay it back. 
and then it's game over. Then you have men in suits coming into Scotland telling you how to write your own fiscal budget. Yeah, like what happens in Ireland, which is supposed to be a sovereign country. But of course it isn't. It isn't. We have Germans now who rock up every year and tell us, well, this is what you can't spend. This is what you can't spend. And you can't do this. And you have to cut here. And Leo Varadkar, the merry Indian, goes, okay, where do I fucking sign, right? That's what Nikki Cranky, Nikki Cranky, Nicola Cranky, Nicola Sturgeon, Nikki Cranky, that's what she wants for Scotland. And only real socialists like Tommy Sheridan understand that. Right? Yes. Freedom! We want freedom! Let us leave the Union. Let us have another. Let us have Indy Ref too. Yeah. Yeah. And then you go to the European Union to give all your freedom away. Boris hires mirror chicken as advisor. It's the best headline I've ever seen in my life. Some guy who went around dressed up to earn money as a chicken is now working for Boris Johnson. Brilliant. <laughs> Marvellous. Lovely. Telegraph. Is this boring the piss out of you? It is. Okay, well, you'll have to bear with me for another 15 minutes. Teenage terrorist can never be named. Bit of that in the papers today. Some story about a kid who was allegedly plotting something at a school and his name is being withheld for legal reasons. Johnson pledges to make Brexit a success for farmers. Don't believe him. He's a liar. Daily Mail, this is important. Carl Beach. Sentenced to prison for 18 years for making misleading statements to the police about dead people and living people. Some of the statements he made were true, I believe. But anyway. They want the police arrested now. Some of the police involved. Um, we'll come back to that in a minute because there's a story about it. I've got the mail story for you. What's in the sun? Alexa, Alexa stop being a pair of outrageous Amazon device listens to couples having sex. Google employees admitted that um, not Google. What, what's wrong with me? Yeah, and Amazon employees have admitted that they have recorded people in their homes while using this thing. But again, where does personal responsibility come into this? Why the outrage at Amazon? We know what Amazon is. And the people behind it and its connection to DARPA, of course, the technology wing of the Pentagon. We know all this. And people know it. So why do you complain and cry and be a willing victim and demand that somebody else takes responsibility for you? You demand... That you're protected. But you're a fucking idiot. You put these things in your home. You start talking to it. You know damn well the capability exists for somebody else to listen in. Wake up. You won't find a smart meter in my house. You won't find a device like that in my house. Yeah, there's a smartphone. But the camera is disabled on it. Most of the time. The microphone is disabled on it most of the time. Am I being naive? Can they bypass that? Maybe they can. But I'm aware of it and I'm not going to claim victimhood if I find out they've been listening in. Right? Come on, people. Holy mother of God. Hosepipe ban in the UK because of the heat. I mean, it's not been anywhere near as warm as last summer. We know this. Last summer was... The hottest since the late 70s. I don't know why there's a hose pipe ban. Could be the fact that the water companies are utterly fucking useless. These are the private companies that own our water supply. It's an outrage, of course. We don't talk about it often enough. Nobody should have to pay for water. And they don't spend any of the... Well, they spend a little bit. But not nearly enough of the billions they make in profits... On fixing the pipes under the ground. Right? If they did, they wouldn't lose millions and millions of gallons of water a month underneath our feet. Right? But Jeremy Corbyn, the biggest liar that ever lived. Jeremy. God, do I hate Jeremy Corbyn. 
And I love his brother. And I feel sorry for him when I say that. Because I really like Piers. But I hate Corbyn. Wretched man. Lying about privatising stuff. Knows it's never going to happen. Uh, b- 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 Nationalising stuff. Knows. It's never going to happen. Knows that European Union regulations mean that it's against the law of your country. And your country is Brussels. Is the European Union. Right? He knows it. It's not going to happen. Lawyer. It is mad. Hi to Stuart Frampton. How you doing to Stoned Crow? Some of you telling me that you don't use the voice technology stuff, nor should you. Because you know that the capability is there for your privacy to be invaded, for your home to be invaded. You know this. And you know what's going to happen with 5G? It's going to be easier. So don't make it easy for them. Don't be a lazy bastard. Don't be saying, Alexa, what time is uh, what time is the tram from Salford uh, going into Manchester? Look it up yourself, you lazy fucking bastard. Right? Come on. Come on. Alexa. Uh, how do I make a uh, raspberry tart? That's raspberry pie for you, Philistine Americans. How do I make a raspberry tart, Alexa? How about you ask your grandmother? But you can't because you stuck her in a fucking home. She used to make nice tarts, didn't she? Huh? Give you a reason to visit your gran. How do I do it, gran? No problem. Just get a bit of flour. Get a bit of, get a, get a bit of castor sugar. A bit, bit, bit of icing sugar. Get a few fucking raspberries. I'll show you how to do it. Alexa! You know? Come on, people. Come on, you know? Honest to God, I saw a film about this recently. Guys were asking Alexa how to, how to change a nappy. I mean, that's a diaper if you're an American. How to change a fucking nappy? I can change a nappy and I don't have children. I used to babysit all my neighbours' kids when I was young. I was the babysitter in the neighbourhood. I used to get three pounds. Tight bastards. Used to give me three quid to spend hours watching telly and looking after their children, including young babies. And I had to learn to change a nappy. A real nappy, right? And a disposable one. I could do it. You have men now going on to Alexa asking how to change a nappy. Madness. Then they cry then when they're hacked. Ah! They're taking my data. They used it. Trump got in because of it. No, you dickhead. Trump got in because they had good reasons to hate Hillary. And he got in because he told a pack of lies. Just like his predecessor. I'll end war. I'll stop all the war. I'll go after crooked Hillary. I'll drain the swamp. And he believed him. That's why he got in. Not because you're a victim of horrible corporations stealing your data. Come on, people. Wake up. Grow up. You know, I'm getting sick of it, to be honest. I'm getting sick of it. Uh, what else have we got for you? A few reindeer were found dead. Climate change. Children. This is how they're terrifying children. You see, this is the stuff they're blaming Cambridge Analytica for doing what the media does every waking second of every effing day. What do you say effing sometimes and fucking other times? I don't know, children. I don't know. You'd have to be a psychologist to figure that one out. Huh? 200 Arctic reindeer were found. They looked like they were hungry. It's climate change. Ah! Ah! They're grazing. They can't graze. Ah! Climate change. Climate change. Santa Claus won't be travelling through the sky on Christmas Eve this year, children, because of climate change. Santa. Santa Claus is not coming to town. Will be a new song released this year by Greta Thunberg. Santa Claus is not coming to town. Santa Claus is not coming to town because of climate change. All together now. Crazy. 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 The Daily Mail. So Richard Henriquez said they want to charge the officers who listened to Carl Beach and maybe imprisoned him. Now, I don't think he said this 
Henriquez. I don't think he says they need to be imprisoned. But I think what they want to do here is, I think they want to send a message to every detective in the country. Stay away from people who make claims against powerful, wealthy people. Right? That's it. I don't need to dwell on this. This is the upshot. Beach is a very strange case. We know this. We know that... I think we can be absolutely sure that some of the people he accused were innocent. But who fed that to him? Detectives who interviewed him. These are clever men and women. Again, they want... It's almost like they want to gaslight the entire country. You know... They want us to forget that we're intelligent people. We're intelligent people. These detectives, these highly trained people, are not fucking idiots. So when Beach, and we're talking about Mike Veal, not just Mike Veal, but all the other detectives who listen to these guys, they're not stupid, you know? And they cross-referenced stuff they were told by Beach with other people. They looked at evidence and they said, yeah, yeah. Edward Heath, yeah. So this is very strange. Heath was a pederast. Greville Janner was a filthy, disgusting, rotten paedophile. This is true. Others weren't. And they're using the others that weren't to discredit the entire thing, but also to impress upon victims. Don't say a word. Detectives, don't look into it your careers will be destroyed. Right? Dreadful. Dreadful. And the media is complicit with it, right? The media is complicit with it. Here's more fake news. Again, I told you earlier on, a psychotic, rotten, narcissistic lunatic. This is the reason they went for him, the elites. Everybody loves this. Here he is lying about going down to ground zero and getting involved. Lying about sending 200 of his own staff down there to help. No evidence of it. Just lying about it. We live in a world where it doesn't matter what the truth is. It just matters what you say and how loudly you say it and repeat it. Keep saying it over and over and over again. And when you are presented with incontrovertible evidence that you are lying, laugh it off and keep lying. Right. I've said it a thousand times. We exist, we live in a post-fact world. Can't get it out of your head now, can you? Santa Claus is not coming to town. Santa Claus is not coming to town because of the bastard in climate change. That's Greta Thunberg. Thunberg. We live in a lunatic asylum where even a guy like me who's worked at every level of the media, seen it all, seen everything... You just shake your head, you can't believe it. A lot of the time. You can't believe what you're seeing. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Greta, this is in the Times. I finally subscribed to the Times, I had to. It's killing me to give them £26 a month. Ah, oh, Christ. That's what your donations get spent on, by the way. The hundreds of pounds it costs to host the programme and to stream it. And everything else. And this nonsense. We've got to do it. So Greta is on a green mission, travelling across the world on a boat to go to the United Nations to tell us that we're all going to die. We're all going to die! Greta Thunberg. More fake news. More fake news. It's like the introduction to The Road to Hell, part one. Chris Rhea. The radio in the car. More fake news. All fake news. Everything. What else have I got for you? There's been more sightings of the Loch Ness Monster this year than ever. So it must be real. Nessie. Here you are. There's the picture. Well, it's obviously... it's obvi- I mean, how could you argue with that? I mean, that's obviously the Loch Ness Monster. You can clearly see the head there and the, and the scales. It's obviously some sort of prehistoric uh, thing. Maybe Triassic period, maybe. Look at it. <laughs> okay. Crack myself up. Don't crack anybody else up, but as long as I crack myself up, it's all that matters. Giving you too much of my time this morning, I think. 
Hi to Paul Meany, how you doing Paul? Paul says he suffered terribly in the UK for being Irish. Invite me on to tell you about my suffering in 1970s Britain by brutal racist coward gangs. It happened Paul. I lived in Kingston upon Thames for a year in the mid 90s. You know, we hadn't yet got to the Good Friday Agreement. There were still older guys who referred to me as Paddy. As a thick fucking Paddy and stuff like that. Um, yeah, of course it happened. No dogs, no blacks, no Irish in whatever order. I know it happened. What are you going to do? Yeah, we're all going to die. Because Santa Claus isn't coming to town. Because all the reindeer are dead. Because of climate change. Every weather anomaly. Every die off of a species will be blamed on climate change. Bees have dementia. It's climate change. One professor actually said, no, it's because of aluminium toxicity. That's why. Where is that coming from? Game over. Nobody's going to talk about that, right? Right. Right, that's it. Get out of here. There's loads more, actually. This is a big story, right? We might get into this on... The radio show this evening in the monologue. 200,000 secondary school kids may have been groomed online. Yeah. We know. Right? And what else was there? What else was there? I'm not getting into what else there was. I'm going to go now because there's loads to do. There is loads to do. There are, there are loads of things uh, to do. Thanks for listening. If I didn't mention you, by the way, it's not because I don't, I don't, I don't want to. I do Martin Coombs. I do Martin. Mick Brown. Did I mention Mick? Uh, I already mentioned Paul. Andy New too. How you doing, Andy New too? And to everybody else. I mentioned Bex, did I, earlier on? Thanks for watching. It's just my take. Just my take. Hi to um, uh, William Henderson, by the way. How you doing, William? A new Live Aid song, he says. Yeah. Am I off air now? I am. No, I'm not. Right, I'm about to be. Right, so join me at five o'clock. By the way, by the way, among the guests this afternoon will be Jonathan Royal, the hypnotherapist, who, um, uh, where am I going here now? Let me bring up the link here, even though I can't bloody sell you. Sell you? I can't sell you. I can't show you the link. Uh, Jesus, what's going on? Um, Richard Willis is a brilliant guy Richard's been on the programme I did a podcast on Richard's I did an interview on Richard's podcast um, last week as well it's a pod being glitching the code.co.uk uh, they've made a film and the film is called Extreme Danger Extreme Hypnosis talked about it with Richard the director the filmmaker the producer of it and also with uh, Neil Sanders but the man who presents it is Jonathan Royal, and Jonathan's going to come on the programme tonight. We'll talk a little bit about the film, we'll plug the film, but I also want to talk about mind control and programming minds and subliminal suggestion. The idea of being suggestible with him, it's going to be really interesting. Uh, Jonathan Royal is among the guests on the Richie Allen Show tonight. There you are. Wanted to get a plug in for that. So that's at five o'clock. It's a radio show on the usual channels, richieallen.co.uk and all the rest of it. So in the meantime, have a great Tuesday and I'll speak to you later. All right? All right.